Hey, Dan Stein here, back with an update on my post from yesterday on angled curtain walls and the challenge of drawing them. Turns out there is a native way, so thanks to several people posting online on LinkedIn, I have an update for you. So Dmitry Chubrak shared this Revit model and a technique of using nested curtain walls. So I'm going to quickly show you how this is put together and then also go through how to create it in a new file. Uh, Henrik Bolt also shared this technique in online. And then Alfredo Medina actually shared a technique of editing a panel in place that I will also show you. So let's check it out. First of all, here's the example Dimitri shared. So there's a uh, just high level. There's an overall curtain wall. And then nested in that on the side here is a curtain wall. So a curtain panel was selected and swapped out with another curtain wall. You can see in properties that there's a vertical angle of 15 degrees and the horizontal angle is still zero. So that gets us this long angled one and then the horizontal one. If we go to edit type, this is a a new curtain wall family type that was created with no borders. And then you can see it has a vertical and a horizontal layout because we needed a vertical and a horizontal element. And then there was another nested curtain wall. And this one's flipped around where the vertical is zero and the angle is 10 degrees. And if we go to edit type, the vertical layout is none and then there's no borders. And then this ends up being a, a pretty close to reality situation. Notice that the vertical is continuous, which actually is how it is built. The vertical is usually continuous and technically structural for lateral loads. And then the, there's a pressure plate and then a cap that's continuous. So you can see the, the other direction is broken. So I'm going to start a brand new file and we'll go through how to create this. I'm just going to use the default template. So we have a wall. We'll switch it out to curtain wall. I'm going to go into the properties and set the vertical to the normal door height. And then I'm just going to get this close. Doesn't have to be perfect for this demonstration. There will be a door here. I have a F code door mm -hmm. that I'm just going to drop in and quickly swap out to make it look correct. And now we're ready to, to set this up. So I'm going to basically create a duplicate of this curtain wall type. We'll just call it storefront two. And we'll turn off the borders. The Revit drop down lists are kind of interesting in that you can actually just, once you can grab one and copy it to the clipboard, you can just paste in. You don't have to do the drop down for all of these. I'll set that back to the main curtain wall. So I'm going to select this area, this new curtain panel system I created. You see how the mullions don't line up? So I'm going to undo that. And make a quick adjustment to compensate for the extra mullion across the bottom that this is, curtain wall is being nested into. And so now when I pick this, that lines up nice and neat. And so when I select this again, I can adjust the vertical angle. And now we have a horizontal angle that is zero degrees and a vertical angle that is 15. 
to get the second horizontal mullion that's at another angle, we have to add another nested curtain panel to these two areas. And I'm going to go ahead and get that prepared over here. I'm going to duplicate it and then go into its properties. And for this one, we'll set the vertical layout to none. Because we don't want any additional vertical elements showing up. And then this already has the borders turned off. So I'll select that, unpin it, and then I'm going to switch it to number three. And then I'll change the horizontal angle to something like 10 degrees. And then here's a curtain grid that just showed up. I can select it and unpin it and move it into place. And then I can do the same on the other side here of the angled vertical element. I need to unpin it. Set the angle to 10 degrees. Select it and unpin it first. So there it is. We have the vertical angled one that is continuous. Still doesn't clean up great at the bottom. And then Alfredo actually had an interesting additional share in the comments on LinkedIn. So if there were just one angled mullion, a quick, easy way to add this would be to select this panel, unpin it, edit in place, and then now we could create an extrusion. We'll start out by picking the plane of the glazing as the place for the extrusion. We draw this one thing. And this could be more complicated than this, but it's just a quick example of, of the idea. And then we hit finish. We could look at this in 3D and maybe that is what you want. You know, maybe it is something that pokes through, but it could also just be something made to line up with the curtain wall system for whatever your aluminum mullion depths are, assuming it's aluminum. And then finish. So all of this is wrapped up into what technically is one curtain wall. This then still could be grouped and positioned off to the side put in a secondary design option. If you edit either one of the groups, the one in the model or the one in the frame type legend, everything's going to stay updated for this one group. And then of course, if this same layout is used multiple times somewhere in the project, then you could place that group multiple times. So thanks for everyone for commenting on LinkedIn and sharing knowledge. Thanks for watching.